Hello, and welcome back into the ShopFix channel, a community joined together for the love of woodworking. In today's episode, I want to discuss the various options that you may have to heat your garage wood shop. If this is your first time checking out the ShopFix channel, don't forget to subscribe. Now let's get right into this. ShopFix, it's for the love of woodworking. So I live in Overland Park, Kansas, and our winters don't get too bad. However, we do have single digit days, and the temperature varies from zero to about 30 degrees Fahrenheit during the winters. So heating my garage was very essential to be able to work out here during the winter months. Now I can certainly work in like a heavy coat and like a hat, however, that makes working with the machines a little bit more cumbersome. And you know, I just don't like working with heavy coats on. So I definitely needed to heat the garage. I'm in an area like the homeowners association stuff. They wouldn't pass off a, like a wood burning stove in the garage. I just couldn't do that. Now, if you're in an area where there's no HOA, you, maybe you're on some land and you can install a wood burning stove. And so that's actually an option that I wish I had, but I can't because I'm living in a townhouse with a strict HOA. And so that just wasn't going to be an option. Now, another option I was thinking was actually routing the HVAC system into the garage via just adding another line off from the basement. However, I debated this because I didn't want any wood dust getting sucked up into the HVAC system and blowing all over the house or just getting a lot of dust in there. And so we wouldn't have clean air. So that kind of, I scrapped that idea because I didn't want any of the wood dust getting into the regular house HVAC system. Now, you can certainly add a filter and maybe just make sure that you close it off when you're not using it. Maybe you can heat the garage with the HVAC system, then close it off after you heat your garage up. But it's just not a very good solution. You don't want to get the wood dust in your regular central heating and cooling system of your house. So I scrapped that idea. I thought of a few ideas of just like units, like single units that I could just install in my wood shop. And you know, there's forced air and there's infrared. So forced air is a little bit more tricky. And when I looked at infrared, I was like, wow, this seems like such an easy way to heat a wood shop. And it's not going to use a lot of electricity and it's not forced air. There's not anything that's really going to break on it. It doesn't take up very much room. It's a small footprint. So I was like, all right, let me check out this infrared heating unit. And I ended up using the infrared heating unit and I just installed it on my ceiling. So let me show you what that looks like and we'll discuss it a little bit more. Okay, so this is the infrared heating unit that I ended up purchasing to heat my garage wood shop. Now, this is the Comfort Zone ceiling mounted quartz heater and it features an adjustable angle halogen light bulb. It has two heat settings, one at 750 and one at 1500 watts. So depending on how cold it is, you can use just one bulb for 750 or like I'm using now, both bulbs for 1500 watts. Now it features high efficiency core elements and it provides immediate safe heat. So that's something I wanted for my wood shop. I didn't want any open flames and I didn't like the idea of forced air. And this is a much safer option to heat your wood shop up. Now it actually tilts. So this whole unit can tilt different directions so that you can aim the heat where you need to in your wood shop. Now to discuss what infrared heating units do, the infrared light just, it's just absorbed by the elements around it. So right now the infrared heating unit is on and all the machines and everything in the wood shop is getting heated by the light. And that's how everything heats up. And it's super efficient, super quick. And now I'm gonna show you kind of the settings um, that this infrared heating unit can set to. So right now I have it on the 1500 watt uh, element and it has two of the bulbs going. I can change it for that setting, which is um, one of the bulbs plus the light. You can set it for both of the bulbs plus the light, obviously the off setting. You can change it to just a single bulb with no light. And you can set it how I like to set it, which is the number two setting, which is both bulbs without the light. Cause I don't really need that extra halogen light. However, you may need that if you're limited on light sources in your wood shop. 
And I can tell you right now that this model, Comfort Zone Ceiling Mounted Quartz Heater, and probably similar models, um, I can't attest to the quality of the other models similar to this one, but I know that the Comfort Zone Ceiling Mounted Quartz Heater works very well. I haven't had any problems with it. I actually built a dedicated outlet just for this heater on the ceiling right here, and you're gonna want a dedicated outlet. So this only draws about 12.5 amps of electricity, so you don't need like a 20 amp outlet. You can simply use a 15 amp outlet. However, it needs to be a dedicated 15 amp outlet, so you won't be able to draw any electricity off whatever this is hooked up to, and that's why I have a dedicated outlet. Now, I actually had this outlet being used for the fan adjacent to this heater, and I used the fan in the summer months, and I used this in the winter months. So I could hook up both of those to the same electrical outlet, but I never use them at the same time. So right now I only use this, and I turn this on anytime during the winter, I'll turn this on and use it, and it, it does cost a couple of dollars of electricity, but I'll tell you what, it is so worth the price because it heats the garage up really well. And that's what I wanna discuss next. I wanna discuss how well this performs and I actually know how well it performs because I've actually taken temperature readings from the outside temperature and the indoor temperature and have seen upwards to a 40 degree difference. And that's just using one of these units. If you have a larger garage wood shop, let's say you have like a two car instead of a one car like me, you might be able to use two of these, maybe one at the front and one at the back, and it's gonna heat your garage wood shop up great in the winter months. So I wanted to have the ability to see how well the infrared heating unit was working to heat up my garage wood shop. So I installed this clock that has a device that rests on the outside of the house to indicate the outdoor temperature in Fahrenheit. And then this device also records the indoor temp in Fahrenheit. And right now, with two of the bulbs working on the infrared heating unit at 1500 watt capacity, I'm recording an indoor temp of 66, which is 32 degrees above the outdoor temperature right now. Now, that may seem like pretty good for one unit. However, it gets even better when the temperature drops even more because the infrared heating unit is still able to heat the garage up to about 50 degrees, even when the temps drop into like the single digits to like in the 20s. However, it may take a little bit longer to achieve those higher temperatures when the outdoor temp drops even lower. You might have to wait like two hours before the temperature starts increasing your wood shop. So that's the one drawback is that it's gonna take a little bit of time to heat up the garage before you can work in it if you want that nice comfortable temperature to work in. Now, I don't see this as a drawback because it's cost effective and the unit doesn't cost much to purchase anyway. So if I have to just turn it on maybe two hours before I come out here and work, I don't see that as a problem at all. I really hope you found this video helpful in figuring out how you're gonna heat your garage in the winter months. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to smash that like button. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to the ShopFix channel. See you in the next video.